The last time we looked at the KSPH, we looked at its reverbs. Today, my friends, we are going to look at the delays. And you think you know delays and how they should sound and the things that they can do. But we're going to find out how the Kurzweil KSP8 uh, treats delays and some of the amazing things that they've done with delay algorithms. Hello again, my friends, and welcome to St. Luminous. So we're going to look at just delays today. Just like before with the uh, reverbs on the KSP-8, there's so much when it comes to delays. I can make videos for hours. So we're just going to look at the presets that are in the KSP-8. I might tweak a few parameters. Uh, but just to go over again, in the KSP-8, there are like hundreds of algorithms. And there are probably a dozen to 20 delay algorithms in this thing. So what is an algorithm? Um, so it's a piece of software created by the engineers at Kurzweil. You can't change the algorithm itself. It is the way it is. But you can adjust the parameters in the algorithm and save it as a preset. So today we're just gonna look at the presets created by the fine folks at Kurzweil. Uh, I'm gonna change a few parameters so you can hear what this uh, KSP-8 can do in terms of delays. And one thing I have to add before I get started, I know this seems really simple, but realize that a delay is just that. It is a delay of the sound you put into the system. This is really important. For example, if it's a 500 millisecond delay, you play something on your guitar, you're going to hear that sound play back to you at 500 milliseconds later. This is something that's really important. We're going to get into that, but it's really important you understand that, especially when it comes to the sound you think a delay um, program makes. All right, let's get into it. Let's start with something simple. The beginning presets are uh, simple. In fact, you can see right here. It says that this is this is a preset number 150, and it's a basic delay, an eighth. So you can tell all it is is an eighth note delay. So let me go ahead and play something for you so you can hear it. Yeah, and you can hear that it has, it's more like an echo, it dies down. Um, so a simple delay, we can go in here and adjust some parameters, which is what I'm going to do. So you can see um, the tempo was based off the system tempo, and I have it set for 80 beats per minute. So this is playing eighth notes um, based on 80 beats per minute tempo. One thing that's a little unusual here that you might find is high frequency damping. So what's happening is that the delays, when they get repeated, they go through a, um, a filter, uh, a low pass filter, basically. And so it's shaving off some of that high end. So I want to play this again. And you can see, you can hear how the repeats as they keep repeating, the more they keep repeating, the darker they get. So it kind of decays a little more naturally, sounds more like an echo than a uh, just a digital delay, simple, sterile, cold digital delay. Listen, listen to it. So I can hear, just, especially towards the tail end, it dies down a little more naturally like a real echo would. So you can go ahead and uh, adjust this a little bit. There are other things you can do here, but I'm not going to get into it. But look at some of these other parameters here. They tell you the length of the delays here. I'm not going to go into it today, what this means, but all it is really saying is this is an eighth note delay. This is Kurzweil's interesting way of saying it's an eighth note delay. And there's more parameters here about the levels of the um, delays. So it turns out there's a lot more than just this simple eighth, eighth note delay, which does make it kind of cool. It can be very simple, or you can make it complicated. And... Like we said before, algorithms, this is the algorithm behind this preset. It is algorithm number 150 called a four-tap delay BPM. I'll go over this in a different video because you can get some really weird, crazy, cool sounds from this. But right now, it is just a simple delay, but it has a little trick up its sleeve. Look at this right here, hold. So what it will do is hold whatever is in the buffer and start repeating it over and over. So I'm going to play something again. Um, I don't know. How about this kind of fun... 
D minor chord or D minor nine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on this hold. Right now it's off. Listen to what happens when I turn on the hold. I'm going to play the chord and I'm going to turn the hold function on. Oops, one more. So you can hear it's in the buffer and it keeps repeating infinitely, it just keeps going. And it's also going down here, look at this, it's going through that high frequency damping uh, filter. So that's why the sound is changing a little bit. Very cool little fun effect. I could even play through it. It just won't have any delay, but you can hear me uh, play it like something in D minor. Yeah. So it creates a neat bed of sound. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. All right. Let's move on to the next preset I want to show you. This next one right here is also a uh, basic delay. Now that's the name of the preset. The algorithm underneath this is actually very complicated. You can do a lot of cool stuff. We're not gonna get into it in this video because we can go on for hours just on this algorithm alone. But I want you to hear it's that you can have it simple and I'm gonna play this for you. And what I'm gonna do is go in here and so you can see some of the parameters. I'm gonna, um, you know, I might make it into a distortion sound. Let's hear it with some uh, distortion. Ooh. Let's look at some of the parameters over here. Actually, it looks it looks very simple. There's some looks like there's some panning parameters, how you can pan things to the left and the right. Uh, also notice that the algorithm is called algorithm 190 moving delay. Huh? Yes, delays actually move if it's the right algorithm. So we're going to look at that right now. Here's all the rest of the parameters. So look at this. There's only two pages of parameters. And you here's the delay time. You saw it, 250 milliseconds. I can turn it up even higher. Uh, I can make a little... Um, I can turn it into a dotted eighth delay to give you that kind of edge, 16th note uh, delays, uh, or sorry, dotted eighth note <laughs> delay rhythm that uh, the edge made famous. I could do that, but look at this. Down here, I'm gonna, yeah, when I'm highlighting, see where it says delay right here? I'm gonna change that into flange because you do know that a delay line that is modulated can be a flange, it could also be a chorus. Yes, delay lines are what create flanges and choruses. So in today's modern age, when you get that flange pedal, it's a digital delay line that is modulating. So this does it right here. So what I have to do is I have to uh, go ahead and put a rate for the LFO or else I'm not gonna get the flange sound. So I'm going to, I like it slow. Yeah, something like that is fine, slow. And I have to um, go a little deeper than zero. So ah, that might be a little too much. Oh, oh, and the feedback, important. If I really want a swooshy sound, I got to turn up the feedback. You can, here's that uh, low pass filter again, the high frequency damping. Oh, and then the last thing I have to do here is I have to give a very short delay time because flanges are very short. So uh, let's do like oh, four milliseconds, oh, 4.1, whatever. So let's listen to it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, play something here. Yeah, I do get a flangey sound. So you can go in here and tweak it a little bit. Um, there's also, so there's a chorus. 
uh, you can go in there and do a chorus setting. Choruses are usually a little higher, like 20 milliseconds or so. And uh, generally without feedback, I'm just going to do that. Let's, let's listen to it really quick. So here's more of a chorus setting. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, so now suddenly what you're finding out is that a simple delay can do a lot of things. Yeah, there's a lot to this little algorithm. So it's only two pages long. So look, if it's any one of you, even you can create your own flange and chorus. Yes, even you. It's a very simple to use algorithm, but there's so much you could do it. Just two pages, you guys. It's really not that complicated. Uh, let's go on to the next one because now we're going to start to get into some weird territory. So this preset is called Spectral 4Tap. So just with a name like that, you already know this is going to be a little different. Let me just play the preset all by itself so you can hear it. Yeah, there's a lot, <laughs> there is a lot going on in that little uh, preset. So uh, let's look at some of the parameters. I'm actually, I'm not going to go too deep into the parameters here. I'm going to change some because I, in this case, I've researched the algorithm. So I do know some things about it. Uh, right here, you can see the algorithm itself. It's number 154. It's called Spectral 4Tap. There's a lot of different settings here. Um, here, it, though, it not only has high frequency damping, it has low frequency damping. So it's got a high pass filter as well as the low pass filter. And I'm not going to get into these right now. I'm just going to change some, some settings here so you can hear how uh, crazy this really gets. So there's a lot of different delays. There's different taps. There's a single delay line, and it takes four different taps from it. So that's why you hear this. There's a lot of delays happening back to back. It's, it's uh, different space taps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to change some of these things. Because this has something called a shaper, which is uh, infamous if you've used Kurzweil stuff before. A shaper is really weird if you've never used Kurzweil equipment. I never have. So when I learned about the shaper, it took me a while to really get a, a you know a hold of this and say, oh, I see what it's doing. Okay, I kind of get it. So I'm just going to adjust these two, the shaper things. What the shaper does, that's a subject of a different video. Again, it's something you can go on for hours talking about, really. There's a lot to the shaper. Uh, so I'm just going to change that. Check, check out how the delay taps change. Crazy, huh? So you heard it was really kind of trippy that there's a couple of those delays that they're distorted, whereas the rest are clean. Because I'm playing with a clean sound. Oops. But just that, even a big chord, like a G chord, listen to what the delays do. Right? Not, it's really interesting because not all of them get distorted. Only two of those taps are distorted. And you can increase the distortion uh, with this. And it's a, it's a very good musical distortion, in my opinion. It doesn't sound harsh or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, and it's very unusual. There's kind of a synthy vibe, which makes a lot of sense since Kurzweil is well known for the synths. Uh, I'm not going to go any deeper than this, but I wanted you to hear how interesting you can make delay lines, because that to me is is something great for some sound effects or something unusual in music. Like that would be great for a riff to have that little uh, distorted delay, but only on some of the delays, not all of them, because there's four delay taps, da -da -ch -ch -ch, so all four are repeating, but to only have like, say, 
those last four distort, but the other are clean, that creates a very unusual texture. Let's move on to the next delay preset. This next one is, they call it Echoplex BPM for beats per minute. I'm just going to play it so you can hear it. Okay, it's still going. It is a little unusual because there's something going on. It's being filtered. Each repeat keeps getting more and more filtered. It's To me, it sounds like it's getting filtered and more filtered, so it keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Let me just try and uh, play a, um, a couple of licks. Let's see how we can use this. And it's still getting mixed with what I played previously. Crazy ass stuff. So uh, let's dive into it a little bit. Take a look. Uh, this makes sense because look at the low frequency damping. So that's set there. Um, now what it has, oh yeah, there's so much with EQ, uh, with some LFOs. The different taps. Oh, and there's a compressor setting because you can also add some distortion to it and distortion warmth. So when you start adding all this craziness to it, because you can hear it still going, <laughs> weird, uh, you're going to need a compressor because you can get these delay repeats to be so wild and out of control. You need a compressor in there to keep this thing from uh, from its volume from getting out of control. So you, that's kind of cool that they added that in there. But also you could probably use the compressor in a very uh, creative way. Uh, so you don't, you're not really worrying about distorting or overdriving the output of the uh, algorithm, but you're squashing your delay repeats to create a, a certain type of ambiance. So again, this is really unusual for delay lines. You don't see too many delay lines with compressors. So you guys, you tell me out there the last delay pedal you saw that included compression along with it. Yeah, I would say right now it's zero. I've never seen one. But this is part of the genius of Kurzweil. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one. It's getting weirder. Let's move on. All right, this one's called Degenerator. Check this out. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with your YouTube video. There's nothing wrong with my setup. This is the distortion created by this particular preset and algorithm. And you can hear the repeats. There it is. So it's weird. My, my delay repeats are degenerating it into a mess of noise. And although I can't use it necessarily to play a lick or a chords because there's too much going on, I could definitely tweak this into coming up with cool sound effects for the songs that I write because I love like interesting textures and sounds you can add. But this is very strange for a delay line and you can tweak it so it's not so noisy. But this is just something that's just out of this world and outrageous. Listen to that sound. It is ugly. It is distorted. It is juicy. It is fantastic that you can have control and tweak these things. I decided I would swell this one in instead of just play licks. Do you notice how the repeats are evolving over time? Yeah, this is just, it's a delay line, but there's so much going on underneath the hood in that algorithm that you can create these really cool tech. Listen to that. It's not what you expect from a delay. And it continues to evolve. So you can use this as a soundscape somewhere in some of your musical creations to be part of your musical soundscape, but it doesn't say stagnant and born. It changes and evolves. Yeah, and to some really neat sounds that you can kind of fade in and out and you may not even know 
what's going to happen later on. So this is a really, really neat way to play with delays. I got to tell you guys, I'm a fan of this kind of creativity when it comes to delays. So uh, let's look at the next weird delay. All right, so this is called Warped Echoes. You can see right here, it's preset number 196 called Warped Echoes. Let's listen to it. Um, I'm gonna do a D minor, like a D minor add nine. Whoa. sound uh let me let's look at it let's look at it really quick i don't want to spend too much time on it okay so all right so it's a moving delay which makes a lot of sense it's a dual moving delay and again only two pages of parameters so for something that's so weird uh you would think oh yeah okay you would think that there should be a lot going on well, there is. There's a lot of parameters over here because it's in stereo. It's dual moving. But check this out. We're not going to get into it. Uh, but look at that. The delay times for this preset are not the same. They're off by a little bit. But we'll have to explore this. And so what if I change this to chorus but kept this at flange? Yeah, some really funky stuff that uh, we could explore. Let's move on to the uh, next and last delay preset I want to share with you. Uh, you can look down here and see the name. It's preset number 199. Two delays, one chorus, one flange. I'm going to play with it and then talk about it really quick. That is a sound I could actually use for a kind of really psychedelic, uh, underwater type sound, I think. That is actually a usable, us, usable sound. Now, um, I want you to take a look here what this is. It's, there's clearly two delays plus a chorus and a flange all happen at the same time. Keep in mind that this is all done through delay lines because like we said just a few minutes ago, a chorus is a moving digital delay line. A flange is a moving digital delay line. Um, if I go into this, look a little deeper, uh, it says right here, it's a dual moving delay plus moving delay. Now there's way more pages of parameters. Um, I haven't gone deep into this. So there's the two delays that we just talked about. Uh, so it looks like there's a delay of 500 milliseconds, one of 80 milliseconds. And there is the uh, chorus sound, and there is the flange sound. Looks like it's a uh, short chorus, 5.9 milliseconds, a 2.4 millisecond flange. So yeah, again, the two delays right there, and here is the chorus and the flange. Because again, with all this stuff here, you guys, um, delay lines can do a lot, especially when they, you can modulate them. So there you go. There's some of the delays, the presets on the KSP-8. You heard it. Everything from a very simple delay, you can do slapback because there are slapback presets. There are tape echo presets that give you uh, a little bit of distortion, a little bit of the modulation that you might get from a tape delay. Uh, there are presets on there uh, about that, and they are uh, really lovely sounding things. There's even one that says, that's called a cheap tape echo, which it doesn't sound that great, but it has that kind of like not a great sounding vibe, which in a weird way makes it sound awesome because it doesn't sound so awesome. So, and you heard the weird distortion effects. I gotta tell you, these delays are crazy and I barely even scratched the surface with these things. 
the next video we're going to talk about choruses but i hope you enjoyed this you learned something about delays and you heard these amazing sounds from the kurzweil ksp8s my friends if you're not already subscribed to this channel go ahead and hit subscribe right now also go ahead and hit the bell so you can be notified the next time i put up a video uh especially the next one's going to be about chorus we've got a lot to go when it comes to showing off what this kurzweil can do um, I would say it would be years before I really grasped everything that this Kurzweil KSP-8 can do. Yes, it is that deep, and it just sounds amazing being that deep. Being that deep. You guys, thank you so much for joining me, and I will talk to you soon. Keep on making music out there.